tell me, where is your master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Welcome back to Echo Base Network, where we keep Star Wars alive and remember why we love it in the first place. Today, we're looking at could the Thrawn original trilogy, the, the book series from Timothy Zahn that began in 1991's Heir to the Empire, could that be happening right before our eyes on Disney Plus? Um, it's very interesting thought. It's very similar to the Lore Star video that came out several months back where he was saying basically, and this gained a lot of traction, folks, that the, the alternate timeline is actually happening right in front of us. And we just weren't aware of it. Well, we have some thoughts here that Zahn's uh, Thrawn trilogy is actually already began. And we're seeing it as uh, the streaming services continue. And we're going to get into just how that is and why that is. And we're going to give you the evidence to support that thought. And I'm going to bring in one of our channel members here who just ironically happens to be Thrawn. What's going on, bro? Hey, Coach. How's it going? Doing well. There's no better person that I could bring in to do a deep dive on Grand Admiral Thrawn and the Thrawn trilogy than my friend here. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this entire thing. Is the Timothy Zahn trilogy happening right before our eyes? There's a lot of evidence to support that John Favreau and Dave Filoni are using the Thrawn trilogy as an outline to their interconnected story. Lately, there's been massive speculation that the Ahsoka series, in particular, will use the Thrawn trilogy as an outline. But upon further investigation, it's much bigger than that. Now, one thing that I want to mention, Thrawn, is that uh, that word interconnectivity. We just talked about it last night on our weekly Saturday Night live stream. Um, we know that Star Wars is shaping up to be told very much like the MCU was. All of these shows are going to be interconnected as far as the Favreau and Filoni verse are concerned. So what's, what shows are we talking about? We're talking about Mandalorian, Ahsoka, uh, Rangers of the New Republic, and the Book of Boba Fett. So you got four different means of storytelling there, and they're all going to be interconnected. Favreau has said that. Even Kathy Kennedy has alluded to that. And we also know that Kathy Kennedy said all of these are leading up to a climactic ending, very similar to Endgame is uh, what I would perceive. So Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy did three different things. Number one, Zahn showcased the development of the New Republic post Return of the Jedi. Number two, he told the story of how the remnants of the Empire were yet still dangerous. And then the third thing that Zahn's trilogy did was he introduced one of the greatest threats in the history of Star Wars, and that being Grand Admiral Thrawn. Well, the Thrawn trilogy that began in 1991 has a lot in common with the Favreau and Filoni uh, universe of The Mandalorian and its upcoming spinoffs. Uh, the New Republic is struggling as remnants of the Empire attempt to regain control. So let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison here uh, and compare Zahn's trilogy with that of the Favreau and Filoni Star Wars story. Uh, well, when you go to Zahn's trilogy, we start with the development of the New Republic and its struggle. Well, taking that and looking at that through the lens of Favreau and Filoni, we think that, that we're going to get that very story in Rangers of the New Republic. We don't know a lot about that show right now, but but we assume that it's going to be about the New Republic. It's even in the name, the title of the show. You don't get you get very little information about the New Republic in The Mandalorian. They show up, a couple X-wing fighters here and there, very little. Not much being said about the New Republic, the people who are actually in control. So we're going to find out there. So that there's the connection between those two. You go back to Zahn's trilogy. Uh, Zahn showed the criminal underworld's complicated relationship with the Empire and the New Republic, as well as learned about key members in the Imperial Navy. Well, you go over to what Favreau and Filoni are doing, we're getting the book of Boba Fett talking about the criminal underworld. We have a new crime lord, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Boba Fett. And uh, we also know the leak, the rumor that Miggs Mayfield, 
former Imperial, is also going to be in the Book of Boba Fett series, and we have to anticipate that he will be that of an ally with Boba Fett. So there's two. There's a match again between the criminal underworld and the Imperial defectants, and what's gonna what we perceive is going to happen with the Book of Boba Fett. Then you move on to a third comparison or similarity between the the, the two different uh, stories. Uh, Zahn's trilogy. What about the Jedi and the Force? In Zahn's trilogy, a seasoned Luke Skywalker teams up with Mara Jade to take on Thrawn's right hand, insane and powerful dark Jedi, Joris Kaboth. I know a lot of people pronounce all of these words very differently, uh, but there's speculation that Kaboth will be on TV screens in the Ahsoka series, and maybe she will need a partner to take him on, and that could just be Luke Skywalker. There's the Favreau and Filoni uh, comparison. Uh, The fact that Kaboth very well could be showing up, because if indeed Thrawn is going to be the main antagonist, then he's going to need somebody else, and you have to assume in Star Wars that person is going to be somewhat of a Force user. We haven't seen that yet, in the Mandalorian, but I do believe that it is coming. And the the last comparison that we want to to um, to highlight here, Thrawn, is that in Zahn's trilogy, uh, there are force sensitive cloning that was taking place, uh, and that's a major plot point in the first two seasons of the Mandalorian. Moff Gideon's mission to obtain Grogu for that of cloning. So there's yet another comparison or similarity between the two, how Favreau and Filoni are taking old EU information, old stories, and they're twisting them, tweaking them, and you're using them in this Favreau Filoni universe. Uh, Is there any evidence to support any of these things? Well, if you look at what has happened lately, uh, one, we want to look at the tweets here um, in This article over at CBR, uh, this article came out in April of 2021, just a few days ago on April the 2nd. And if you just look at the tweets, uh, as Lucasfilm celebrates its 50th anniversary, we're curating a collection of essential Star Wars legends, novels, and trade paperback with new covers. Shatterpoint will also receive a fully unabridged audio edition for the first time. Well, what does that have anything to do with what we're talking about? The very fact that they're pulling a legends book, they're celebrating the legends. Look at Delray Books here. We plan to add more classic Legends books to the collection in the future with the next group coming this fall. And oh, they're starting with potentially, the arguably, the greatest Legends book of all time, Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire. That really started it all, made it wildly popular. Another thing, if you look here, you see a Luke Skywalker Black Series edition with the Salamari. What story does that come from, Thrawn? Heir to the Empire. That comes from Heir to the Empire. It, there is no irony, guys, in the fact that a Black Series figure of Luke Skywalker being pulled from here, from this story, that we could buy, I believe you could buy two of these right now on pre-order, and that's all. There's a limit. Um, so that's very interesting. And... Uh, you brought it up to me in conversation that if you look at, if you look here at the information, uh, nowhere does the information on this box say legends. And that's a really interesting thought to me. Uh, and the third thing is, um, evidence to support this moving forward Force sensitive clones is a huge part of the story. And that's exactly what I think is going to be happening. If you look at the book, or not the book of Boba Fett, but the Mandalorian, the a major plot point is Grogu and getting him to create that of clones. And it just so happens that the, the more Star Wars we're getting, the more they're using clones in the stories. It goes far beyond that of the Clone Wars and the Clone Troopers and things like that. So uh, now I brought our resident Uh, expert here on Thrawn and he's going to kind of do a deep dive on that character and if you listen to what he's about to tell you then you can you get an idea of where this interconnected story very well could go Thrawn go ahead 
All right, thanks, Coach. So, yeah, I'm just going to compare a little bit of what we got in the EU um, and what we're getting in the new canon. So basically, Thrawn's people are still the Chiss. Um, they're still framed as isolationists that think too highly of themselves. They really don't have allies. They ignore indirect threats like attacks on all of their weaker neighbors. They're very much against the notion of preemptive attack. Thrawn is still a tactical military genius that goes against all of these notions uh, with their with the goal in mind of saving his people. He's a he's a greater good type person. Um, he's not. Uh, he doesn't rule by fear or terror like a lot of the Empire is known for. Um, and that sets him apart from a lot of what we normally get with the Empire. Um, and that's both in canon and in the EU. So in the EU specifically, uh, what's interesting is that Thrawn is made aware of these huge threats against the Chiss and the galaxy in general when he runs into the Trade Federation in the Unknown Regions. So the Federation was actually sent by Palpatine during the Clone Wars to stop a Republic exploration ship led by Jedi Juris Sabath. Um, and that ship that Juris was taking was just an exploration ship. It was going, uh, it, it was just on an exploration mission. And what Palpatine was afraid of was that uh, this group that he's heard of, the Far Outsiders, which were later known as the Yuzan Vong, uh, and were amassing forces at the edge of the galaxy, uh, would become aware of the Republic, and the Republic was not uh, ready to handle a threat like that. So Palpatine, under no circumstances, did he want to risk having that Jedi's ship captured, and then the Republic becomes a new target for the uh, for the Vong. So it, ultimately, Thrawn runs into this uh, Trade Fre Federation uh, convoy, and he, uh, he he actually defeats the convoy with his limited forces. The, the convoy attacks him. Um, and uh, eventually it leads to him being in contact with Palpatine. And Palpatine's impressed. And Palpatine basically says, uh, you know, ask for, for Thrawn's help. And, and Thrawn agrees, given the threat. So uh, this was the first time that Thrawn made contact with the Republic. And it was through Palpatine. Um, and uh, Thrawn helps Palpatine ultimately uh, to destroy Sabayoth. Um and not by intention, by the way. Uh, Sabayoth actually becomes desperate when he's cornered and uh, tries to choke force uh, Thrawn from his ship, and then it's Thrawn's commanders fire on the ship and blow it up. Um, but that's why in Air to the Empire, we know that uh, Thrawn knows right away that Sabayoth is a clone. Um, so yeah, the, the thing is there, from that point on, uh, Thrawn and Palpatine are in communication um, so it leads up to Thrawn being exiled and the Imperials picking up Thrawn. So when Thrawn is brought before the Empire in the EU, uh, well, Palpatine already knows Thrawn very well. And uh, he, he has, has a farce that he sets up to uh, politically make it okay to have a non-human uh, inducted into the Empire to, uh, to help him out. So if you look at the new canon, uh, that encounter doesn't exist. So Sabayath... Uh, Sabath, uh, he's he's not encountered, at least as of yet. Um, and Thrawn is actually the first one aware of this greater threat. Um, and he brings that information to Palpatine. So actually the first contact the first contact Thrawn has with the Republic is when he helps Anakin on Batu during the Clone Wars. Um, and Al Anakin actually goes back and tells Palpatine about Thrawn and the Chiss. Um, so the, the same sort of stuff happens in the new canon where Thrawn winds up exiled and then brought to, before the Empire uh, and the Emperor um, and has to work his way up through the military despite all the discrimination against aliens. Uh, but uh, here it's the mention of Anakin that piques Palpatine's interest and gets Thrawn put into the military, into the Imperial Academy and all, Academy and all that. Um, so again, back to the EU, what happens there is that in the EU, again, it's political. There's this this outsider that's now a member of the military, and nobody likes that. Uh, so Palpatine purposely uh, sends Thrawn to the unknown regions, and that's Thrawn's area. He he's he's sent to establish an imperial foothold out there, um, and his goal was to really unite the galaxy under Palpatine to stand against the far outsiders, the the Vong, um, and he created. Thrawn created the Empire of the Hand and ruled it uh, for the Empire 
uh, in a very different way than the Galactic Empire normally ruled, like the region where the Republic was, right? So basically, this was more of a uh, it was ruled actually like more of the Republic. It was it was more uh, autonomous. The the regions under Thrawn's command were given a lot more leeway, um, and because of that. Thrawn was very respected, not only by those he commanded, but those who he ruled. And, uh, you know, region, the planets would join into the Empire of the Han uh, willingly. Uh, so, you know, Thrawn was respected and, and even loved uh, in the EU. Um, and in the new canon, you know, he Thrawn works his way up in a lot of the same ways, right? So same, same, type of, same types of challenges. Uh, but in the end, we see what we have in Star Wars Rebels, where Thrawn is really in the mix of everything uh, leading up to episode four. Um, and as we know, the thing that pulls Thrawn away literally uh, is at the very end of Rebels uh, when uh, these uh, sort of hyperspace capable whales at the end uh, grab his ship and Ezra ha is, is confronting him on the bridge of, of his ship and they get pulled away somewhere, which we can only assume is probably the unknown regions. Um, whereas in the EU, it's by purpose that Thrawn is out in the unknown regions. He's he's there strategically. And even when he hears that the second Death Star has, has been destroyed and uh, that the emperor had had died, he doesn't come back. He strategically stays out there to build a force to counterattack, and that's what leads into heir to the empire. And that sounds like that could potentially be a very great enemy, potentially, in uh, this series moving forward. If he's been out there this whole time building a massive fleet, building forces, this could be this could be insane moving forward. Yeah, that's right. And we really don't know, uh, you know, where, where Ezra's mind is at this point. You know, if Thrawn can convince Ezra to join him, that, hey, look, you know what? We've got bigger problems out here. They, they find this threat out there in the unknown regions, or Thrawn already knows of this threat. Um, and, uh, you know, they rejoin the Chiss or something like that. Uh, when Ezra, when we see Ezra next, he might not be the Ezra that we right. left behind. So using that story as an outline, it's it's possible, and, and some people won't like this because I know that a lot of us really want to see Mara Jade, like I, I know that, but if, if Ahsoka is being used in this story, she could play the role of Jade, honestly. She really could. Absolutely. Uh, and um, Ezra could play the role of Sabath. And it might be a lot more emotional at that point because um, who do you root for? This might be a lot more area of gray. Nobody's the good guy. Yeah, and and we've seen that. We, that's a great point, Thrawn. We've seen that. We've seen the whole gray, the whole middle. There is no good or bad. I personally like the good or bad when when uh, those lines are clearly defined. But that would not that would not surprise me at all. And but. It sounds like it could be great Star Wars, and that's what we're after. So thank you very much for coming on here. Did you have any more any more thoughts or interesting thoughts moving forward about wh where the story could go? Yeah, you know, we talked about a couple of other just tiny points from the new canon that are very interesting um, that I don't think came up in the EU. Um, one of the points is that Thrawn figures out during the new canon that Vader is Anakin, Um and making that connection and knowing that Luke Skywalker, who's very well known, I'm sure, to Thrawn at this point, uh, is the mm -hmm. son of Anakin Skywalker, and he killed Anakin Skywalker, Vader. Um, without context, Thrawn could, you know, he, he could think Luke is a pretty bad guy, <laughs> um, not understanding the context behind everything. Um, and, you know, that that's an interesting... That would be it would be interesting if Thrawn encounters Luke and challenges him on that point. Um, second thing is the Chiss actually have force sensitive children in the new canon. Uh, they're used to uh, navigate hyperspace for the Chiss, and they're only they, they've only got force sensitive powers in their younger years. When they become teenagers, they lose this power. They, they lose their force sensitivity. Um, and the Chiss call them Skywalkers. Mm. Um, 
that's another interesting thing that came up. Uh, last thing, uh, EU Thron. I, I meant to mention this earlier. Uh, he uh, he he met a group of soldiers called the Hand of Judgment um, and trained them to become the 501st. Um, I wonder if the Bad Batch could turn into something like the 501st. And and Thrawn could have a hand in doing that. That's another that's a, another thing I, I wondered about. A lot of speculation there, and oh my goodness, if we get if all of those things happen, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be amazing, uh, and it definitely could. It definitely could. Well, thank you very much for coming on, man, and and doing this and and doing that deep dive on Thrawn. So look at all the interconnection between these shows. Where do you think this is going? Is this happening right before us and we didn't even realize it? We're definitely going to know more in the very near future. We're definitely going to be finding out. And let's watch that Bad Batch here in a few days and see where that goes. But when Ahsoka and the Book of Boba Fett and Rangers of the New Republic come out, we are going to know much more. And I have a feeling as it goes on, more and more of the Zahn trilogy is going to come Unraveled, and I want to I want to leave you guys with this on page fourteen, right here in Heir to the Empire, and I want to thank our member uh, Sean Watts for sending me this gorgeous first edition uh, of the book. I remember reading this Thrawn uh, when I was mm, four, 12, 12 or thirteen when it first came out in ninety one. I was probably I was twelve years old, eleven years old, something like that, and. I got this book, and when I got to chapter two, and Luke had the meeting, his final meeting with with Ben Kenobi's Force Ghost, one of the things that Ben said, uh, it says, Ben's face softened again, and he smiled. And this is his saying goodbye. He's not going to be able to come back and see Luke again. He's moving on. He says, you will yet face great dangers, Luke, but you will also find new allies at times and places where you expect them least. And I and as I read that, I think to myself, well, in the book, it's obviously talking about Mara Jade. But in this Favreau Filoni universe, that definitely could be Ahsoka. And look who's saying that, Thrawn. Ben Kenobi saying that. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, I just, I gave myself chill bumps, guys. It happened yep. again. <laughs> Same here. I mean, yep. that's, that's a perfect segue um, into using the new canon and merging it with the old. That is a fantastic paragraph that you just read right there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Awesome, brother. Well, thank you very much for coming on Thrawn and thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, and don't forget, uh, we live stream every Saturday night. We got content coming out Monday through Friday. And as always, I am the coach. He is Thrawn for Nick, who is not here on this one. We are, you are echo base network and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>